Dundee City of Discovery, a place which contains all that is best in Scotland. Enterprise, commitment, resilience and a quality of living difficult to match elsewhere. The abundance of leisure facilities helps put Dundee at the top of independent surveys investigating standards of living around the country. Hardly surprising considering Dundee is in the heart of an area recognised as the home of golf. Its parklands boast absolute tranquility with all ages catered for and there can be few more well-balanced settings for the workplace than the Dundee Business Park, which has managed to combine old and new in the most pleasing manner. That high standard already set will be reflected in a multi-million pound waterfront development which will transform the city's River Tay shoreline. Centrepiece will be Captain Scott's Royal Research Ship Discovery, built here in 1901 for his famous Antarctic expedition and now returned to the city of its birth. From the continual development of the town centre to the award-winning housing programme, like this much-acclaimed mill conversion, Dundee is proving every day that it's going places. And it couldn't be easier to reach with a transport system of road, rail and urban airport second to none. Just as Dundee's reputation as a place to live and work has grown, so too has its football fame. Today the city's name is revered across Europe when footballing excellence and the sportsmanship of supporters is talked about. In, in the past, Dundee uh, Football Club uh, have had uh, a, a very good record, but oh, the late 70s and all through the 80s, Dundee United have been uh, to the fore, not just on, on the playing field, but also on the terraces where their supporters have been recognised in Europe as the best behaved supporters. United! 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 We are the champions! We go to Tanadice because the boys who wear the black and tangerine are going to take us on a European dream. We are the champions and we're Scotland's number one because we play the rest and put them out of sight. We are united. That is Nettie playing in midfield today with Richard Goff in centre defence. Milne, wriggles clear, might just get the chip and he does, he's scored! Oh, what a great goal! If it is possible, I have my eyes on the referee, it's gone, that's it, the finish! United have done it for the first time in their history. Autumn 1990 and Britain's longest serving manager is doing what he does best, coaching the youngsters entrusted with the future of Dundee United. They're now being asked to bring further success to Tanadice to match the achievements of their predecessors. To rise to the heights achieved by Neri, Milne, Hegarty, Malpass, Bannon, Sturrock and company will be no mean feat because under the guidance of Jim McLean, those players turned a small provincial club into one of the biggest names in European football. At home they won two League Cups and the Scottish League Championship. Abroad they reached a UEFA Cup final and a European Cup semi-final. Tanadice wouldn't be the same today if it weren't for the appointment of Jim McLean as coach in December 1971. Jim McLean was coach at Dens Park and the Dundee players were always looked at the peak of fitness. And uh, when he approached us, we took a chance on Jim McLean. The first thing he asked for was, a, st was a, a stopwatch to get the players speeded up. 
Well, the first priority was assessing the staff that was here, obviously, but uh, in one of the first practice matches, I stopped it within uh, five or ten minutes, and I, uh, I thought that the 11 coaches in the park, nobody was prepared to do any running. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, getting them fitter, getting them a wee bit uh, better organised, uh, was uh, the first steps that I took in trying to get an improve improvement here at Tannadice. At that time, you know, uh, as far as uh, a force in football was concerned, Dundee United were, uh, oh, you know, well down the list in Scotland and obviously in Europe as well. And when I came along, there was only the manager and a physiotherapist uh, uh, on the staff. And then uh, about, I think we'd be lucky if we had 25 full-time pros at that time. With limited resources, the manager first consolidated, then made steady progress until 1975, when United finished fourth in the first division, their best ever league performance. But league reconstruction proved a major setback the following year. There's no doubt at all that... Uh, there's nobody old enough to remember this, but uh, I said at the time that the, the scramble for Premier Division places was coming uh, a year too soon for us because we definitely were well on our way to uh, getting uh, a youth policy really settled and also getting the team, in my opinion, uh, far better prepared on the field. And uh, it uh, was very fortunate for us to finish uh, clear of relegation that year. I think it was in the last game we needed a point at Ibrox and uh, it's not often we've gone there and got a point but uh, we managed that and we stayed up but uh, who knows what would have happened if we had gone down at that time because we would have had to probably sell some of the young talent we had at the time. It was the narrowest of escapes for United with goal difference keeping them and Aberdeen in the Premier Division while Dundee were relegated with St Johnston. But with that hurdle crossed, United bounced back to finish fourth next season while firing a warning shot that the Glasgow stranglehold on silverware was losing its grip. Again, McLean will take it. Colin Jackson moving downfield. Nobody picking him up at the moment. McLean through. Not gathered. Down to Jackson and it's there. McLean in the clear. Robertson and Johnson in the middle. McDonald at the edge of the box. And what a goal! What a goal by Alec McDonald. Well, he's taking the kick. Sturrock must score and he does. Beautiful ball by Paul Sturrock. Across McAdam. Wallace bundled off it and that's a penalty. And a long, long run from Hamish McAlpin. Here he goes. Beautifully stuck away by McAlpin. Adam wins it, Fleming forward to Sturrock, Wallace is square, Sturrock out in front to Wallace, Wallace scores and it's 3-2. Fourth spot in the league secured a valuable UEFA Cup place and began a remarkable run which has seen United compete in Europe for 14 successive seasons, with the Tanadise men finishing third in each of the next two years. In December 1979, United were in their first League Cup final. Wins over Airdrie, Queen's Park and Wraith Rovers set up a 6-2 semi-final thrashing of Hamilton at East End Park. The Hamden final against Aberdeen ended goalless. In as far as we went to Hamden and really at the end of the day came away with a draw, which we probably didn't merit. You know, our performance that day was very, very poor. The bonus was obviously uh, the game being shifted to, to Dens Park. Uh, and I was sitting in the changing room before the game and I knew I knew we were going to win the game. Uh, there are certain times in certain games, I, I don't know, I, that I've, at times I've sat in the uh, dressing room and knew before we kicked off that there was only going to be one winners. And that night, when we ran out onto the onto Dens Park, the crowd was incredible, you know, uh, and uh, uh, obviously we finished up uh, winning the game quite easily. Kirkwood is still down, but that's a good ball to Pettigrew. Still a chance, he's caught! When it's gone, Dundee United have taken the lead. Traffic clashes a great ball. Clark is out. Oh, great play by Clark. Clark read it well. Right out of his goal, out of his penalty area. Eddie again. Now Capel to Bannon. Beautifully cultured player, Bannon. 
Holt. Stunnock on the left again. Fleming is inside the footing with it. McLeish. Now Stunnock on the break. Willie Frederick is inside and he's on the clear. When he takes it off, a known goal. 3 0. The break was on by Sturrock. He had pace and drive, kept his eye on the ball, looked up for Pettigrew, couldn't see him, tried to cut it round, and Willie Muller nudged it away from Clark. And then it goes, the final whistle. United have won the Scottish League Cup. There is Jim McLean having been near on us so often. And this is United's first major win in their long history. Well, I think the directors have been magnificent in all the time I've been here. And I remember that night, uh, Mr Robertson, who really, uh, we tend to forget what, uh, in particular, he and other directors have done for Dundee United over the years. And he stood with almost tears in his eyes when he said that Jim, I never thought I'd love to see this day. And it was uh, tremendous for me to hear that statement and it was a great boost to feel that uh, we had uh, helped fulfil a lifetime ambition uh, by Mr Robertson and uh, other directors as well and that uh, even the supporters uh, realising that uh, we'd won our first trophy uh, it was uh, magnificent to be part of it. Twelve months later, United had the chance of another League Cup final appearance. Having disposed of East Fife, Cowdenbeath, Motherwell and Clydebank, Celtic were the opponents in the two-leg semi. With the Tannadice match ending 1-1, Celtic were favourites to finish the tie in Glasgow. But United had other ideas. Here's Bannon forcing his way forward. Goes past McGrain. There's Payne. A great driven ball. Willie Fettigrew gives Dundee United the perfect start with three minutes on the clock. David Dodds, the tall figure at the far post. McGrain heads out. Another chance for Bannon. Near post this time. That is a marvellous goal from Paul Sturrock. And the holders, Dundee United, now firmly in the driving seat. Bad ball forward. There's Pettigrew. Now he might go all on his own. He's got Sturrock wide on the outside. No danger for Celtic. There's Dodds. That's it. The perfect finish to a marvellous move. Davy Dodds makes it 3 0. That was one of the best performances since I've been manager, and uh, it was uh, terrific to see uh, the way that we can play at Tanadice. But at that time, we went down to Glasgow on one of the few occasions and really showed them uh, what we're capable of doing up in the East. Just could not lose to Dundee. It was a, it was an, it was a situation that the pressure was so great. You know, I, the first time I really understood a Celtic Rangers Cup final, that there was just no way for the for to be able to live in the town and and face your supporters. Could you lose? And again, we came out victors on the day. And it was again a, an instance where before the game I knew we were going to win. Round with the outside of his foot for Dodds. Les Barr covers it. Sturrock coming across for it. This is what Sturrock's good at. That's excellent play. Dodge with a chance. He's done it. Payne. Oh, that's the ball. Let me. Yes. That's a header again. Brilliant save. And it's in. Paul Sturrock. 3 0. Three well-taken goals had earned United victory over their great city rivals and retained the League Cup, their second trophy, in just 12 months. United, therefore, had booked their place in next year's UEFA Cup. But Jim McLean was keen to improve on his track record in European competition. Never had United progressed beyond the second round, and Monaco were fancied to stop them at the first. That was the start, I think. That was uh, the, re the team Bannon had uh, come along by that time. He was playing uh, regular in the team. 
by that time, Paul Hegarty had uh, settled into centre half after uh, moving from uh, centre forward, and it, it was a balance to the team. You know, there was uh, it was near enough you could near enough pick Dundee United's 13 every week, round about that time. And uh, again, the same thing happened. You know, for all the stars that they had, and all the millions that they had spent. Uh, they were the same type of team, very undisciplined, wanted to go forward all the time and uh, again paid the penalty for it. Uh, and really they were an excellent side because they came here and, and beat us 2-1 uh, in the second leg. And uh, they were a far better team than that result uh, showed. The venue was Monaco where the crowd included Prince Rainier. And he, like the other local inhabitants, must have been stunned by Dundee United's start which produced two away goals in 20 minutes, the first here by Billy Kirkwood. It was a left-wing move which also produced the second, but this time the cross was low and the scorer, David Dodds. Sweden's Ralph Edström lifted the morale of his French team by scoring a simple goal just after the hour. but it served to lift the Scots as well. And after a good run by Dodds, was abruptly ended in the box, Eamon Bannon stepped forward for his first penalty of the match. Three one. The Scots were certainly finding enough room in the Principality. Another pinpoint cross, met by Dodds, and it's 4-1. Then on this attack, when one of his defenders took over the handling role, Eamon Bannon had the chance for another penalty. But the Scots making quite sure that the referee knew where the spot was. Bannon repeated the medicine for 5-1. A mistake by McAlpine, a minute from time, which allowed Bellone to score a consolation goal for Monaco, maybe spoiled the goalkeeper's evening, but certainly didn't dampen the celebrations. 5-2 to Dundee United. That was a magnificent performance in Monaco. They, they really thought that uh, they would beat us, and they were actually a good side. Uh, they beat us here 2-1 in the return leg, but I think that we were complacent from the way we'd played over there and uh, the result we'd got. Away from home and winning 5-2 against uh, one of the top clubs at that time in Europe. Uh, and a combination of both probably, the Borussia game as well, were, were uh, the two things that made the rest of Europe take notice of Dundee United. I think that really was the turning point as far as us establishing ourselves in Europe as a team that uh, we had to, our other clubs had to look out for. Uh, because uh, that was one of the most exciting nights here at Tanadice. The thing that really astounded us was was the when they came, when Borussia turned up here, the manager who is now the manager of uh, Bayern Munich, I think, uh, had quoted in the papers that no team in Europe could could uh, beat Borussia with a, uh, with Borussia having a two nothing lead, which kind of spurred the players on. Uh, the manager may reminded us of that. He, he also reminded the, uh, most of the support of that, of what their manager had said. So they got a very hostile reception when they came out here uh, for their warm-up and for the start of the game. And our crowd were very, very noisy that night. And again, it was just one of those nights we, we uh, just... We, obviously, we played two different styles. When, it, when we were at home, we played a typical Scottish style. We pressurised the... Uh, we wouldn't allow them to roll it out at the back and force them to kick it. When we went away from home, we played a uh, typical uh, counter-attacking style. They just could not handle us pressurising them like we did. We just didn't give them a minute on the ball. And the, the goals came... This, uh, by the end of the, the game, you know, half of them were wanting the, the whistle to blow as quickly as possible. It was Paul Sturrock who really stood out for Dundee United. Sturrock here setting up Ralph Milne to drive his shot past goalkeeper Clef. And right on half-time, Sturrock again involved and Billy Kirkwood from 25 yards levelling the aggregate scores. Six minutes into the second half now and a bad header by Ringles. Sturrock's in the clear for the goal he deserved. Sturrock might have had a second, his header hitting a post and a simple chance for Paul Hegarty. 
then Eamon Bannon fashioned the perfect finale. Bannon, once of Chelsea, running half the length of the field with the Germans in his wake. A fitting end to arguably the best performance in Dundee United's history. On the night, again, we had uh, some inspirational performances from people like Bannon and Millen and that. And uh, uh, There is no substitute for positive play, and these people just destroyed the, the two full-backs that uh, Borussia had, made it easy, made easy for the team on the night. Well, I think that we gained confidence in Monaco and we gained confidence uh, with the Borussia result. And since uh, winning these games, then obviously the players uh, knew that they were better than they probably thought beforehand and they knew they could beat some of the better sides in Europe. Up to then, I had definitely the wrong attitude in that uh, I was uh, desperate to be involved in Europe, but uh, it was costing the, the club money every year and it was something that we approached and that uh, it was uh, necessary to be involved in, but uh, it was going to cost us money. But uh, when we beat uh, Borussia, we started saying, oh, well, maybe we could go a wee bit further and be around semi-finals and finals. And uh, if you're around semi-finals and finals, that's when the big money is. Well, a tentative opening 20 minutes or so. And picked on, the goalkeeper doing well. Out to Bannon. Bannon's made it! And United get that vital opening goal. Back by Hegarty into the path of Neri. And Neri makes it two. Flight it over by Sturrock. There's Hegarty again. And that's the third. The United captain doing it again. Ralph Milne. In here the first time. A villain. Davids. Beaten by Malpass. David Dodds is onside. Across towards Milne. And the perfect header to make it for. The tie now surely well and truly won. But there's Ralph Milne. And there's goal number five. Splendid isolation as that cross came over. And he completely beat goalkeeper De Bruyne by picking his spot in the corner. Another thrilling night at Tannadice as United took their three-round goals tally to 16. For the first time ever, Jim McLean's team were in a European quarter-final against Radniki Nice. The Yugoslavs were to halt United's progress, but only after another Tayside European victory. So Bayern with a kick. Made it away by Vojinovic. Back again to Neri. And this time, David Neri makes it count. Came to the corner, taking the line. Bayern flighting it in. The clearance coming out, finding its way to Neri. And I think, in fairness, Milinkovic did not have any sight of that ball at all, and it sped into the net. Now Rodnitsky looking a shade rattled defensively. Corner kick and a superb header. Tribulation for Hamish McAlpine and the United players. One and a half minutes left in the first half. But look at this corner kick, the driven ball from Bannon. Dodds attacking the ball and rifling that header into the net. United enhanced their growing European status in next year's UEFA Cup competition with a 2 0 win over PSV Eindhoven in Holland, followed by a 3 1 aggregate defeat of Vikings to Wanger. The West Germans' Werder Bremen proved to be a stiff test. Camp, now Bannon, getting away from Gruber, Fichtel coming to meet him. Bannon gets it over. Ralph Bell makes it 1-0. Marvellous goal from Dundee United. Ralph Bell getting his 10th goal of the season. Beautifully created by Bannon on the left. Sitka, the king in the middle, this fella. Back it comes to Meyer. One each. There's Neri. Marvellous goal from David Neri. 
masterly finish from the United centre-back. Touched by Milne, beautifully flighted by Neri. Gordinsky was off his line, he couldn't get to it. And that puts United back to the driving seat. A fighting draw in West Germany saw United through to the quarter-finals once more, only to fall to Bohemians of Prague. However, Jim McLean was now free to concentrate on his league title challenge, with his next match against leaders Aberdeen at Pitodri. Goff, foraging forward, that's a nice ball. Milne, great goal! It's a goal, the ball has gone in, it went over the line. one nothing for Dundee United. David Ons. Stark, which going a begging. That's the second one. Milne, two nothing. Strachan will take it, and I think a penalty has been given. Has it? Penalty kick, yes, for that charge in Miller. He's done it. Two one. With Celtic losing at Dens, only one point now separated the top three challengers. After a 3-3 draw with Hibs at Tanadice, Rangers were next on Tayside. Way by McClellan, pressure still on. Oh, Bannon. Well, that's curled in very well, that's it. Ralph Milne, there was no cover there. Oh, Cooper. Better move by Cooper. Drifts away, good ball to Clark. He's onside, good play by Clark, and it's in! He scored his first goal for Rangers. Goff. Good running by Milne, can he get it? He does. Great play by Milne. Patterson, no good, Chile. Yes, stun up, 2-1. That's Eamon Bannon, Patterson with him. There's the chip, still in play, and that's a third one by Stark. Neatly taken, practically on the final whistle. I can recollect we had to play Celtic twice, a Saturday and a Wednesday. I remember losing the Saturday game, in very dis disappointing circumstances. We'd played reasonably well in that game, and uh, I think we lost 2-0 uh, two or 2-1 two or something. And we had to go again on the Wednesday, and the, the, the league was near enough finished. You know, I think Celtic had, uh, had decided that they had wrapped it up. By Christmas, they were 12 points ahead of us or something ridiculous like that. And we had come with a run. And uh, we went back on the Wednesday with really the pressure off us because we, we I think, thought as well that we had, uh, we had blown any chances that we had. And it was a marvellous game. I can remember, I think, Richard Goff was sent off in the game and we were down to 10 men. We were losing 2-1. And we scored two late goals, I think a Paul Hegarty header and a Ralph Millen shot. And we finished winning the game 3-2. And it so happened, I think Celtic lost the following Saturday again. And it opened the whole league up. And it, we then knew it was all in our own hands. The last six games were incredible. Uh, the support, the travelling support was unbelievable. I think yeah, Dun United started to put on buses, free buses to, for the support to travel to these games. And I think we all of a sudden started to feel it was maybe possible and also the supporters at the same time. And I think we gelled together. Starak turning well, being brought down and that will be a penalty kick. Can't be any doubt about it. Now it's Bannon against Thompson. 1-0 to United. Deep one this time by Bannon. Goff is head to it. And Stark makes it too. Couldn't really have been simpler, but it was well executed. A deep, flat, long corner kick from Bannon. Goff won it comfortably. Firm headed across. Stark left to get the touch. And then goes his 14th goal of the season. Let's see what they can make of this. Fitzpatrick with the kick. Great header from Sumner. Bannon to take it. Lighting it in. Off the post. And Dodds completes the task. Well, it's down to Eamon Bannon's expertise in the dead ball. Beautifully flighted, Baines at full stretch, it came off the post. Dodds reacted first. Stark trying to tee it up for Stark. There's David Dodds. 
Neri coming through, great chance for United. Brilliantly finished by David Neri. Well, here's Milne taking on McLaughlin for pace. Great chance for United. Beautifully taken. Here's Paul Sturrock. And away from Duffy. Waiting in the middle is Dodge and Holt. Here's David Dodge. And he's made it. Dodds gets his second, it's United's fourth. And now it's looking like a rout. That was an exceptional performance, but really it was a home game for us because uh, we had uh, paid either the admission money or the bus money for the supporters to get down there, and we had uh, by far the more vocal support at that game. And that was a decision that we took at that time that was definitely, uh, in the end, probably one of the reasons why we won uh, the title. But... Uh, it was uh, really rolling at that time. It was easy to go in the park with the conference buzzing uh, right through the team. After a 4-0 defeat of Motherwell, United were just 90 minutes away from the first Scottish League title. But it was desperately tight, with Celtic and Aberdeen just one point behind. Only victory in the final match at Dens would guarantee the championship. The game before I had pulled a hamstring and uh, was very, very doubtful right up to the game and probably shouldn't have played over, uh, over at Dens Park, but obviously how, how big the game. And I remember I pulled it again halfway through, I don't know, about 10, 15 minutes into the first half and played for the next hour with this strain uh, in my, in my uh, right hamstring. And honestly, you know, when you, you know, the adrenaline's flow and everything else, it wasn't as sore you know, as, as a normal hamstring pull was because I was concentrating and the crowd was there and it was such a big occasion. It wasn't until I, I uh, came off and I got substituted in the game that the pain became searing in, on the hamstring. That's mostly what I can remember about the tie. I remember also that uh, uh, Ralph Mullen scored an incredible goal. Uh, you know, unbelievable finisher Ralph Mullen was in great vision. And I can also remember that Eamon Bannon took the penalty that the goalkeeper saved. And him and I were running in and Eamon just managed to, to flick it back into the net again. That is Neri playing in midfield today with Richard Goff in centre defence. Milne. Wriggles clear. Might just get the chip and he does, he's scored! Oh, what a great goal! Looked as if he might be losing his balance, but he went for the chip and he couldn't get a sweeter goal than that. Four minutes gone, one nothing. There's Sturrock and Neary goes down, penalty kick. Bannon against Kelly. He saved it. That's it, though. The second. Fraser. Up come the blue shots, there's Sinclair trying to get in. Ferguson, he's done it. 2-1. If it is possible, I have my eyes on the referee, it's gone, that's it, the finish. United have done it for the first time in their history. The Scottish Premier Division champions, and there is a man who walked out of Dens Park, where he was coached down the road, and totally transformed the face of football in this city. There they are, the last draw, as the team come back out, and as they come back out, we can, I think, there they are, they're coming back, the police are allowing them to come out with Jim McLean to greet the supporters, and I must say, I don't think I've seen scenes like this in Dundee before, a jam-packed crowd, thousands outside, and there's a man, is he gonna smile? Come on, Jim, give us a smile.
Victory in the championship meant first time entry to the European Cup and Hamron Spartans were swept aside in the first round. United held tight in Belgium against Standard Liège but faced the home leg without an injured Paul Sturrock. I watched from the, the, the stand that night the best European performance I've ever seen from a player, again Ralph Millen, who, who I think himself destroyed Standard Liège and we run out for a uh, coasted uh, to a 4 0 victory that night. A powerful display of real quality by Dundee United. Eamon Bannon's cross headed in by Ralph Milne. 26 minutes gone, and that's 1 0. And it was Milne again in the last attack of the first half, springing the offside trap and a very confident finish from Milne. The pattern the same in the second half. Paul Hegarty's header making it 3 0. Indeed, the Belgian champions were totally dominated and Standard Liège conceded a fourth goal slid in by Davy Dodds to complete a splendid night for Dundee United. Victory over the Belgian champions was followed by a 2-1 defeat by Rapid Vienna in the quarter-final first leg. But the players were spurred on by remarks made by the Austrian manager. I can always remember the, again uh, a silly quote from the manager of uh, Vienna after after the 2-1 game in Vienna that he felt that we were the poorest team he had ever played in Europe. We luckily enough and he, uh, were able to make him eat his words in the second game. Though the score shows uh, one nothing, there was far more in the game than that result. That result showed. And playing it for Goff, and that little moment of hesitation on the part of Richard Goff. Allowing the ball to run for the throw, but it was deflected. This coin. Chance now for Stark. And David Dodds makes it for United. 21 minutes gone, and Dodds gets the vital goal. David Dodds's first half goal was enough to defeat the confident Austrians and booked United a place in the semi-finals of the European Cup. Their opponents, the Italian champions, Roma. Kick with Tremil. Still has it. Throws it across to Dodds. Brilliant move at the other end. Two great chances in two minutes. Mill did that well. Dodds wasn't just too sure, but made certain. Out to Goff. Goff back in. Oh, chance for Bannon. Still not in, it's there. Davy Dodds scores. It's the breakthrough United wanted. Then the United leading by one goal to nil. Critical goal scored in the 48th minute by Davy Dodds. Since then, they've looked by far the better side. Looking for a second goal. There it goes, it's a goal! Goalkeeper absolutely nowhere. Derek Stark, what a thumper. Right in the corner. 2-0 going on about five that night. You know, I think we walked in at the end of the game and said to ourselves that we had probably had the best chance ever to finish a tie. Uh, some of the chances we missed and their goalkeeper seemed to have one of those kind of birthday nights. And I always remember that their, their, uh, their managers uh, had... had accused us of being on drugs that night, uh, which I thought was unbelievable. I thought uh, it's just that, again, our home style was to pressure the, t the opposition and they were just not used to it. They just could not handle it. Uh, but you could see signs of how good a team they were. One of the uh, sad memories for me was the experience in Rome in the return leg. And really, uh, it's one that uh, I never look back at. And, uh, I say right here now that I've got the video of that match and I've never watched the 3 nothing defeat over there because really it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, I can remember I got taken off with about uh, eight minutes to go and at the end of the game, their whole team were over to our dugout, right over. You know, they were very, very hostile. There was, uh, you know, a lot of jostling and pushing as we went back to the, to the changing rooms. And also we had our bus stoned after the game. So I, I was saying to myself, I, would, I wouldn't have liked to have been in there had we walked out with a victory, especially having to come back there again because the final was played on their, in, on, their, on their pitch. Undoubtedly, a European Cup final against Liverpool would have been an incredible experience for United, but their achievement in reaching the semis should never be underestimated. 
The hopes of Standard Liège and Rapid Vienna lay in tatters, and the Italians had had the fright of their lives. Others were to perish at the hands of United in the UEFA Cup two years later. Funny enough, the hardest game we had in all the games we played in Europe was the first game against Lens. I think we went to, to Lens and played and lost one, one nothing. And because it was so early in the season with so many new players, we could have possibly lost that game three or four nothing uh, on the night. Uh, I can remember Billy Thompson having two or three very good saves in the game and uh, some atrocious misses from the, the Lens players. And it gave us the confidence then, you know, two weeks later we, we, we won two nothing here but was more comprehensive the victory than, than, the, result, uh, than the result showed. And then we had difficult ties uh, going uh, to the IM Curtin uh, University cry over. The Romanians held United in the first half at Tannadice and almost took a shock lead. The second half, however, was a different story. Within eight minutes, United were in front. A Milne corner was nodded down by Clark, and Ian Redford was on the spot to turn the ball home. After that, it looked as if Rakolta in the Craiova goal would rob the home side of a convincing lead. A well-directed Redford header was superbly saved. Then a Bowman shot was acrobatically fisted clear. But in the last 10 minutes, the two vital goals came. A Bannon corner found the head of Paul Hegarty's outstanding deputy, John Clark, and the keeper had no chance. Then in the dying seconds, a great malpass run and shot saw the ball rebound to Redford, who nodded home his second. A goalless draw in the return leg meant a third round place against Hajduk Split from Yugoslavia. There's a cross, the keeper in trouble, a great chance, and it's a goal. An important breakthrough for Dundee United, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Just almost on the half hour, 28 minutes gone, and Jim McInerney, for whom things haven't run well at the moment, was there as that ball came over, kept his cool, slotted it in, left-footed into an empty net. United pushing extra men in the box as Sturrock does a quick about turn, trying to get it to his right foot, trying to hook it across. Clark's there in the goal! John Clark, 2-0. After a missed kick by Billy McKinley, he really biffed it. What a beautiful goal. McKinley completely missed kicked, but Clark didn't. Tremendous shot high into the corner. United lead 2-0. That year we were very fortunate to get through the early rounds and that uh, we didn't meet exceptional teams because I honestly think at that time we were, uh, it most certainly was not the best team we've had here at Tannadice in the time that I've been here. But uh, we grew in stature tremendous, uh, tremendously uh, during that season. And then obviously it came to the Barcelona game, which again uh, I think is a highlight for everybody. Uh, you know. Uh, Going back to, I can remember the Kevin Gallagher goal. I still maintain he doesn't mean uh, he didn't mean it. He says he does, but I just couldn't see it myself. Ferguson coming back quickly to pick up the ball on the fence. He got the free kick for handball, and this is Polster. And that's played away by Moratalia. Gallagher was hoping to get free on the right. But the United fans encouraged as the throw is quickly taken towards Sturrock. There's Gallagher. The perfect start for Dundee United. Here Ferguson leads the celebrations. But the man who got the goal is young Kevin Gallagher. Look at this on the volley. Driving it beyond Zubizarreta into the far corner. And it's a dream start for United. <laughs> Here's Victor for Barcelona. St. John showing his Liverpool bias perhaps, Carrasco's cross, a chance there for Barcelona, they're queuing up on the line, and a lucky break for Billy Thompson, he did very well indeed. And really the two games against Barcelona were so, so exciting to play in, you know, going to the new Camp, I can remember walking out and the, our fans who, there must have been about 12, 1400 of them were away at the top, they were just a speck at the top of the new Camp Stadium, and I can remember losing a goal in the 44th minute, uh, a corner kick, uh, Billy Thompson, and I, I was on a post at that time, Billy Thompson, just got the minutest touches and just skiffed it past my leg into the net. We make it exactly five minutes to have time. And I 
can always remember walking in and feeling, you know, we deserved more out of that half. We had played better football than than, uh, than they had. And we came out the second half. Again, I think Barcelona felt it was all over. It was just a matter of time before they scored. That's the scoreline in the background. Aggregate, though, is one off. certainly after the Barcelona result, not only in the home leg winning one nothing, but in particular winning over there. That's when we really believed we could beat anybody on uh, their own territory. And uh, that team was exceptional away from home. The mayor from the Dundee United fans saw that the next out the hat was Borussia Mönchengladbach. Hearts fell a bit. How did you feel going into that game? Uh, at that time, we were on the crest of a wave, you know, uh, we, we were winning, with, uh, I think we were through by then to the final of the, the Scottish Cup, uh, we had all, everything was going for us, and uh, we had no problems about that. Obviously, we, uh, the game here, uh, we probably deserved to win, I think, uh, one nothing would have been, we had a couple of chances that we should have tucked away, but walking off the park, I always remember uh, one of their centre-halves uh, uh, walking over to mine going, like that in Germany, as, as I think as if to say, we were out, you know. And again, going to Borussia, as I've said it before, there's so many teams who feel that once they've done their, their job away from home, it's just all going to happen in their own country. And really, Borussia never kicked the ball uh, in, their own, in their own stadium. And Neri has joined Paul Hegarty in the box. Oh. Camps beats it out. There's Bannon. The chance is yes. Anders Ferguson. And Dundee United have scored. The goal stands. Jubilation for Ian Ferguson. The Bucklesburg Stadium is silenced apart from the clutch of Dundee United supporters who've gone wild behind Billy Thompson's goal. The corner kicks it up. Camps was not convincing, beating it out. It was a fine header here by Eamon Bannon, getting up on the six-yard line, nodding it to Ferguson. A powerful header. Front set couldn't reach it. And United have taken the lead. Well, Mr. Dos Santos becoming much more of a central figure in the action. Here it goes to Barovka, off the post. And dumped away from Ron, and there's Dave Bowman, and the United defence survives once again. And the performances justify that tonight. Outstanding in defence, superbly organised in midfield and very dangerous on the break. Here's Kevin Gallagher, he's away from Herlofsson. Can he do it all by himself? He has Redford waiting in the middle. Here's Gallagher, now Redford, a great chance for United second. There's Redford, yes! The night of glory is completed by Ian Redford and Jim McLean celebrates Kevin Gallagher's coolness under pressure, setting it up for Redford. How about this for coolness? At this stage in the match, there's a way past camps and the final whistle has gone. Dundee United are through to the UEFA Cup final. And they'll face Gothenburg to qualify tonight 
that the celebrations begin among the United players going to greet their fans. This has been one of the finest performances in history by a Scottish club side. A string of memorable aggregate victories have taken United through to the two-leg UEFA Cup final against IFK Gothenburg. But a 1-0 first-leg defeat in Sweden was followed by the loss of the Scottish Cup final to St Mirren. After the Scottish Cup final, I think we were physically drained and mentally drained. But more mentally, you know, where was was after the Cup final, everything going to, were we going to lose everything? You know, was it going to be slip out our grasp? More these doubts and self-doubts we start, uh, started to come through our minds. And when we came to play in this game, uh, I obviously thought we did very well over in Gothenburg. Uh, we were a bit disappointed we'd lost the goal, but and probably merited better out of the game. But when we came here, I felt that we had, we had the, the ability to beat the team. Uh, but it was just having the confidence to beat, uh, to beat Gothenburg. And when we lost the early goal, uh, I think uh, everything went against us then. You know, we were just on a downer from then on. And though we, we st still tried to pressure them and we, we gave our lot for 90 minutes, the, we knew that really, I think subconsciously, we knew we, it was going to be an uphill battle to peg this back. United making progress on the ground this time. And no free kick, that looked like obstruction. Here's a break on for Nielsen. Well, Sturrock was aggrieved. Here's Nielsen taking on Clark. And that's the goal which... United were dreading Leonard Nielsen 22 minutes into the first half. And the last free kick taken short to McAnally. Here's Malpass. Better play from United. Sturrock has freedom on the left. Here's Ian Ferguson. Well, you can't come much closer than that. Good recovery though by Ferguson. Good play on the touchline. Here's John Clark. Good play from Clark, and there's the equaliser! And that is a magnificent goal from John Clark. Now just look at this for quality striking. Turning away from his marker, the left foot shot, swerving away from Bernison, in off the post, and United are right back in the match. Yeah, you're looking for Clark, that's towards Gallagher! And it could be closer. The referee is checking with his bench. Gunnar Bengtsson is on his feet, and there goes the final whistle. Relief for the Swedish bench. IFK Gothenburg have won the UEFA Cup, and you really can't take anything away from them. There's their supporters. Leonard Nielsen being hugged. The flags are waving, and the United flags also waving as the United players go to collect their losers' medals. So there's Paul Sturrock, Billy Thompson going through, the United fans appreciating Supreme efforts from Dundee United this season. They made such a contribution to the season, both in Europe and at home. And in the end, they finish up, sadly, with no winners' medals to show for all their efforts over 70 long matches. I think the fans' appreciation in the end was incredible. I think the appreciation was for, for the season as much as for the UEFA final. I think the surprise of the Gothenburg players for the, the, the ovation they got, uh, but... You know, it'll be a night I'll never forget because of, of, uh, of how the support uh, treated the whole game. You know, they were obviously disappointed. The players were disappointed. The club was disappointed. But they made it a, a great night, even through disappointment. Well, I think that if you ask for any less than perfection, you most certainly will get less. And we've only won three trophies. And obviously, I'm supposed to have asked for perfection. I think if I had asked for less, then most certainly we would uh, have lost uh, some of the trophies that we've won. Well, I think the thing is that he is a disciplinarian. He is a hard man to please. He is, the man's a perfectionist. The man wants, wants you to play to 100% to your capabilities. Now, if you do not give that, he's more angry that the player hasn't given it. You understand? So he's let him, the player has let himself down, but also he's letting his teammates down. And I think if you run a club very strictly, and you uh, run a club that you do not allow players at times to be below the standard that he knows they can, they can get. The only thing you can achieve is success. To me, what have done United done in the past 15 years is incredible in Europe and in Scotland. And long may it last. We are the champions. Scottish football. It is 
uniquely United's triumph this afternoon. There they are, ready to celebrate. I'm keeping my eye on that dugout. Because they're going to come out of it like greyhounds out of a trap. And who can blame them? The championship is on. If it is possible, I have my eyes on the referee. It's gone. That's it. The finish. reasons for success for Dundee United has been sheer hard work coupled with ability. In Dundee we have that same application and like Dundee United we intend to make Dundee an even more successful team in the future.